Bournemouth have participated in the Premier League for six of the last eight seasons, with their best result being a ninth place finish in the 2016-2017 season. And over the past couple of years, their focus has turned on recruiting talented youngsters, signing the likes of Milos Kerkes, Max Ahrens, and my boy, Alex Scott. Today, we take over the manager's seat at Bournemouth and I will try to take them to a Premier League title while only signing players who are 21 years or younger. Can we prove Alan Hansen wrong and actually win something with kids? You can't win anything with kids. So guys, here we are in game with Bournemouth with their current squad. I've blocked the transfer window for this first summer because I wanted to use the squad as it is in real life. And there is some really, really talented players in here that they've already kind of achieved in terms of some of their signings. Milos Kerkes, Alex Scott and Max Ahrens I mentioned in my intro, but Zabiani is very, very good as well. Anton Tormenio, another Bristol City man. If you guys didn't know, I'm a Bristol City supporter. So seeing all of these guys in the Premier League is pretty cool, but also pretty uh, devastating that they're not still at our club. But uh, there's a lot of talent in this team already. And then you've already got really good players at the club. Obviously, the likes of uh, Cliver, Solanke, Phil Billing, Neto, all very, very good goalkeeper of good goalkeepers, all very, very good players, but also uh, uh, interesting combos to have. If we go into the tactic for today guys i'm going to use my own tactic now i released this tactic in the week it's mine nothing of gyrs is here and i wanted to see how it would do it did well in testing but i wanted to give it a run out for five seasons and this is what we are going to do we are going to pin in these guys into their positions max aaron's in the right back spot milos kerkes in the right back uh, in the left back spot and then alex scott will come in to be our attacking playmaker uh, once he returns from his injury uh, bristol city sold into bournemouth with an injury He's out for six weeks to three months. Once he's come back, once he's completed his rehabilitation, he's going to go into this spot here. Now, you guys ask me all the time about how I manage to pin players into my positions. Uh, go onto your home tab, go onto my profile, go on to go on holiday, and then you have these two options here, tactics and team selection. Uh, so I tick the first one always, which is use the current match tactics. And then in this instance, we will be ticking this second box, use the current team selection when possible. So when those players are fit, these guys will play in these positions and the AI assistant manager will pick everybody else. Which if we do just that, we pick without restriction the unpicked positions. This is how the team is going to look going into season number one. Obviously Neto comes in there. Sensi and Zabiani are there. Kilkenny alongside Billing in the defensive midfield spots. Obviously Alex Scott can't play so Christie comes in there right now. Uh, Brooks, Cliver and Solanke coming in. So this is going to be an interesting one. Obviously we're not stacked at defensive midfielder despite the fact that we have two of them. Uh, in this particular tactic. Uh, we do have Tyler, Adam come, uh, Tyler Adams coming in from Leeds. He will take up one of those positions. Uh, and obviously, Luis Sinistera coming in is a very interesting one as well, uh, coming in from Leeds United along with some of these others. I didn't know that they signed Callum McKenna. He's a very good goalkeeper this year. So that kind of fits in with the theme of signing the younger wonder kid type players um so that is going to be the team going into the season obviously we do have three these three competitions and we are expected to avoid relegation from the premier league now obviously this is real life premier league squads and stuff like that so we are 300 to 1 to win the league but we are predicted to finish in 15th so i'm thinking that we can kind of do at least that i don't see us being in relegation bother just yet so fingers crossed we can get through that and have a good season and ideally finish somewhere mid table i definitely take that for season number one and then we can go into business and actually start signing some of these young wonder kids to see if we can win something with a youth squad effectively So for me, season one was a complete free hit, but I still wanted to be as competitive as possible on every single front. However, we were quickly dumped out of the EFL Cup at the hands of Luton Town in the second round. We opened the scoring in this game, but gave away too many opportunities at our goal, with Luton running out 3-2 winners. But once the team had settled and learned the system a little bit more, we had some success in the FA Cup later in the season. Our first fixture was in January in the third round as we knocked out championship side Coventry with relative ease. We then progressed to take on Chelsea at home in the fourth round and we were the better side here as Alex Scott opened the scoring before David Brooks added an exclamation mark on the game in the 93rd minute. So we moved into the fifth round where we faced yet another London based side in West Ham and yet again we were in complete control here beating them 2-0 on the day without the Hammers registering a single shot on target. 
Up next, it was Liverpool at Anfield in the quarterfinals, and this was a step too far for us this season, as goals from Salah, Nunes and Canate saw Liverpool open up a 3-0 lead. Dominic Solanke did score for us in the 71st minute, but it would be too little too late and our FA Cup run would come to an end. And in the Premier League, we got off to a great start after an opening day defeat to Nottingham Forest. We then went on to beat Newcastle, Burnley and Brentford as we looked to climb the table. We had a fantastic festive period which saw us win four of our six games in December, even securing an impressive 2-0 win against Manchester United at Old Trafford. The key man for us this season was Dominic Solanke who was an absolute bags man for us, netting 25 goals in all competitions, but I feel like we need to get him some help to really take us to the next level. After the turn of the year, we took our game to another level and started to look like the real deal even going on a six-game winning run to send us flying up the table. We did end the season with a little bit of a whimper, only securing three points from our final four games, but we secured a total of 65 points this season, which saw us finish in seventh place in the Premier League. That finish means that we will be playing continental football next season, even if it is in the Conference League. Season 1 was a great foundation season, but I will be looking to use that as our baseline moving forward. Over the summer, we have just under £34 million to spend on this team, and it's time to go Wonder Kid shopping. So guys, going straight in with the transfer update for season number two, and we have been very, very active in this transfer window. I've already highlighted three transfers that we did really, really early in this window. Neto was picked up by Arsenal. He was extremely interested in going to Arsenal, so we sold him for £15.5 million. Chris Mepham has also left the club. He's gone to join Luton Town for another £15 million. And then we got 65 mils worth of transfers on this side as well. Lloyd Kelly, the former Bristol City man, did not want to renew his contract here, so he's gone over to Dortmund. We sold Romain Favre over to El Nasser in Saudi Arabia for £26.5 million. Lewis Cook has also joined him in Saudi. He's gone to Al Itihad for £24 million. And James Hill, who didn't really play for us at all last season, has joined Sheffield United for £13.75 million. Now, on the left-hand side of the screen, you will be able to see that I have spent a lot of money, £111 million and pounds on four players. Yes, I spent a lot of money on some of these players. First and foremost, Archie Gray comes in from Leeds United. Obviously, we are trying to find these young gems, and it's always nice to have an English one there as well. So we went and picked him up from Leeds United. Uh, £53 million for him. He only played 14 times for them in the championship last season. He's going to start for me this year. I can't remember where Leeds got on. They did get promoted, so that we will take them on this season. So it'll be interesting to see how we get on against them. At the back, we signed Chris Christian Mosquera is how I'm going to butcher this poor man's name from Valencia. 20 years of age, this one. He's a big brute of a centre back. Absolute physical specimen. Six foot three. Uh, a Spanish uh, youth international as well. So that's going to be a very interesting one coming over from Valencia. We picked him up for £24 million after him playing 24 times in La Liga last season. We needed a new goalkeeper with Neto departing. And we signed Gorahelme Arrestes, is how I'm going to butcher this poor man's name from Toulouse. The young French shot style. 19 years of age, very good, develops very, very well in this year's game. He's listed as a wonder kid, um, so obviously this kind of fits into the realms of what we're trying to do with this save. £11.25 million for him after him keeping eight clean sheets in 33 appearances in La Liga for Toulouse last season. And then finally, we signed Ernest Nouama. Uh, he comes in as a very, very dynamic winger. Him and Cliver, I feel, on both wings is going to be really, really interesting to see how they get on together. 16 dribbling alongside 17 acceleration, 16 uh, agility, and 16 pace. He's going to be very, very tricky, and that is exactly what I'm looking for with this. But I have spent a lot of money. Yes, some of that is in installments on Archie Gray, but I think that outlay is definitely worth it. If we go into the tactics screen, I'm only going to pin in two players this season because Kirkes and Max Aarons are now fully established in those fullback positions. I don't want to make sure that they're playing every game. If they need to rest one, they can absolutely rest one. But the two players we aren't going to pin in, Alex Scott is going to be in as that playmaker again. And Archie Gray is going to come in and learn the defensive midfield position. If I go back on Gray, he's a natural there as well. But we're just going to train him there just a little bit more all season and see how he gets on there for the rest of the year. If we quick pick without restriction, the unpicked positions only. This is how we are set up. So Restes in goal, Aaron, Zabiani, Sensei and Kirkes. Adams alongside Gray in the defensive midfield spot. Alex Scott we've already spoken about. Nurma comes in 
alongside Cliver on the wings, and then big Dominic Solanke up top. He is currently wanted by Wolves and Al Nasser, and I have listed him for £70 million, which is his value. If we get £70 million, I'll take it and reinvest it in the team. If he doesn't go, happy days, we keep Dominic Solanke. If we go over to the competitions tab, you can see we are in four competitions this year. Obviously, because England got the extra coefficient spot at the end of the season, it all trickled down, and we are now in the Europa League for season number two, which is going to be an interesting one, taking this young team into a Europa League. If we go into the season preview, we are 350 to 1. We are now worse odds than we were last season, despite, in my opinion, us getting better so Leeds and Leicester two of the promoted teams have better odds than us this season and I think we can prove the bookmakers wrong by doing much better than finishing in 17th let's play through the season let's simulate and see how we get on We will kick off our season two recap by talking about our domestic cup competitions because that was shocking to say the least. The first trophy on offer for us this season was the EFL Cup where we faced Brighton in the third rank. Sadly, this one wasn't the game for us as Brighton dispatched us without even getting out of second gear. And things got even more embarrassing in the FA Cup as we managed to defeat Stoke in the third round before losing at home to League One Oxford United in the fourth round. We should really hang our heads in shame after that performance, but our Premier League performance was much better than this. Our start to the season was impressive to say the least, going unbeaten for our first four games while scoring 15 goals in the process. We did suffer defeats to some of the league's better teams, but were largely consistent in the first half of the season, even beating Chelsea, Arsenal and Manchester United at home before Christmas. Dominic Solanke was our main threat yet again this season, scoring 24 goals in all competitions, but he now wants to leave the club to join a better squad, which is pretty rude if you ask me. Of all the summer signings, it was Ernest Nurma who shone brightest in this side, contributing 19 goals and 10 assists in his 47 appearances this season, which I think is a great debut year. We started 2025 very, very well with Manchester City handing us our first loss of the new year, but for a second season in a row, it seemed like we ran out of steam towards the end of the campaign, losing four of our last five fixtures. However, thanks to our first half of the season exploits, we managed to finish in the sixth place position, meaning it would be the Europa League again for us next year. And speaking of the Europa League, we almost had a flawless league phase, winning every single game except our fixture against Stuttgart at home. But those seven victory saws finished third in the league table with 21 points and automatically qualified for the round of 16. Here we'd faced Portuguese giants Porto and we would be on the road in the first leg. Porto had a fantastic chance to take the lead in this one from the spot in the first half, but Evan Ilsen saw his penalty impressively saved by Restes to keep the game nil-nil. However, that was seemingly in vain as Porto did strike first with a nicely worked goal and finish in the second half. But we wouldn't be distracted by that as we battle back in the game and score goals through Noema and Alex Scott to give us a slender lead to take home. We then took the lead in the second leg as Noema scored his second goal in as many games before Matthias Rice lost his head and was shown a straight red card. With Porto down to 10 men, the floodgates opened and we started rattling in the goals into the back of the net. The final score on the night was 5-2 to us, seeing us progress with a 7-3 aggregate win. So we moved into the quarterfinals where we'd face Italian side Roma and this time we'd be at home in the first leg. We came to play in this one as we opened up a two goal lead at half time with Mosquera and Alex Scott getting on the score sheet. Then in the second half we doubled that tally with Ryan Christie and Luis Sinistera getting in on the action. Roma did add one late consolation goal through Tommaso Baldanzi, but we took a three goal lead to Rome with the confidence of progressing sky high. To make things even better, Marcus Sensei extended that lead after a nicely worse set piece routine in the first half. Following that, Roma did battle back into the game and ultimately won 2-1 on the night, but it wasn't enough to overcome that first leg deficit, so we moved into the semi-finals. It was Greek side AEK in between us and our first final appearance of this rebuild, and we travelled to Greece for the first leg. This was a tight game, but we did strike first through Tyler Adams, but AEK were able to pull themselves level before half-time, and that is how the first leg finished. Back in Bournemouth, things were a bit more open, and we scored three 
three goals inside three first half minutes to open up a commanding lead. Ezekiel Ponce did score a goal for the Greek side on the hour mark, but there was no way we were going to throw away a two goal lead at home, so we moved into the final. Here we faced Italian opposition for the second time in the knockout stages as we took on Fiorentina. And it would be the Italian side who drew first blood as the former Manchester United loanee Sofian Amrabat rifled the ball into the back of the net on the 10 minute mark. We did clap back with a goal of our own pretty quickly as Dominic Solanke got on the end of a Milos Kerkes through ball and applied a nice finish to make it 1-1. However, we could not get our hands on the trophy this season as Giacomo Bonaventura scored a second goal for Fiorentina and despite our best efforts, we couldn't get a second of our own and had to sit there and watch the Italian side lift the Europa League. Even though we didn't win anything this season, I still think it was a fantastic year and will be our new benchmark moving forward. Over the summer, we have just shy of £50 million to spend and several key members of the squad are currently wanted. So I'm expecting a very active summer. So guys, it's transfer update for season number three and this is potentially the craziest transfer window that I've ever been involved with because we've only signed one player, but it's a very good one player. We've sold a couple players or moved a couple players on. Mark Travers has gone to West Brom on loan for the season for 33k. David Brooks has gone to Hull City for 4.2 million pounds initially, could rise to five. Ryan Fredericks has gone to St. Mirren for 120k, that could rise to 165k. And Joe Rothwell has gone to Bristol City for 575k. Then we have one more big transfer out going. Antoine Semenyo has gone to Al Hilal. He has gone over to Saudi Arabia for 24 million pounds. Was kind of a little bit of a bit part player for us um, over the last season or so. Obviously getting 16 appearances in the Premier League, but 12, sorry, nine of those in the Premier League all coming as substitute appearances. Didn't really set the world alight. So for 24 million quid, I thought, yes, please. I also help out my team, Bristol City, with a little bit of that transfer fee now now we talk about the player that i signed if you did see in the split second between between me clicking on Anton Semenyo's profile we've signed this man Laminia Mal I can't believe it either. He is at Bournemouth. Yes, we spent an absolute fortune on him. £64 million to be precise. He only played once for Bournemouth, uh, for Barcelona last season. So we picked him up. He was unhappy. He wanted to play. He's not been playing too, too much. And if you go over to Barcelona, this is why Simeone Inzaghi is the Barcelona manager. And if we go into their uh, tactic screen, you can see what he's playing. And there's no room for um, for uh, Laminia Mal in this unfortunately for him that's great news for us because we pick him up and he is going to be an absolute beast for us this year i'm almost certain of it looking at him attributes wise obviously he doesn't look as good as i have seen him look at 18 but we know where his fixed potential is. He's in that top potential range. Give him a season of playing football for Bournemouth. I think he can be that guy again. Now, he we've given him the number 10, so we're expecting a lot from him. And we're going to play him as the inside forward on this right-hand side. If we go into the tactic screen, this is how our lineup looks this season. I'm not going to pin anyone in this year. I'm just kind of going to leave it up to my assistant. Dominic Solanke is still here. He is now wanted by Brentford, Fulham and Leicester, but nobody's off any money for him it always says he's wanted loads of teams i keep getting the media things loads of teams want solanke nobody's made us an offer for him so i think cliver and uh, yamal as the two wingers and then obviously we've got Nuama on the bench and sinistero as well and Traore. i think we're stacked in these positions and our team's looking really really good uh, obviously the development of some of these players like restes is turning into a very good player uh, lots of caps for the french under 21s now despite being 20 max aarons looks like a hell of a player he's still not been capped by england but he is now wanted by Spurs. Hopefully we can avoid those guys. Archie Gray is developing quite nicely for us. For you Leeds fans out there, he's doing really, really well. My man, I've still got his shirt there. Alex Scott is doing very well. Uh, mentally, he is levels above a lots of players at his age. And I just think this team is really good. The squad's pretty small, but the team's good. The team is good. If we go into our competitions tab, this is how we are set up this season. We do have the four competitions. Obviously, we are Europa League finalists in season number two. I want to get back to that final. Hopefully, we can do that. And maybe in the league, we can push ourselves a little bit higher. Maybe get into that Champions League qualification because ultimately, we're now 200 to 1 to win the league. We're not favourites, but we are expected to finish in mid-table, which is much better than we were last year. So, I'm really hoping we can kick on and really do something with this Bournemouth team and I still can't believe that we signed Laminia Mal to Bournemouth. I, 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 let's just get into the season and see how well he does.
Kicking off Season 3, we will talk about yet another disappointing performance in the EFL Cup. We moved through the third round with a 6-0 demolition of Barrow before suffering a penalty loss to Liverpool, with Ryan Christie missing his second penalty of the shootout in a tie that ended 11-10 to Liverpool. But in the FA Cup, we had our best performance of the rebuild so far. We progressed through the third round with a comfortable 3-1 win against Norwich before needing a replay to dispatch Brighton. After that, we snuck past Everton in the fifth round with a 2-1 win before taking on Crystal Palace in the quarterfinals. This one took place at Selhurst Park, but we were super clinical in front of goal, bagging one in each half to see us move into the semis at Wembley. Here we take on Brentford in a very end-to-end -end game, where we took the lead twice in the game only to see the Bees come back shortly after and level things up. But as I thought we were going into extra time, Archie Gray found himself receiving the ball in the penalty area and his shot crashed off the underside of the crossbar and into the goal to see us move into the FA Cup final. This felt like we were coming up against the final boss in a video game as we'd have to take on Manchester City in that final. Pep did shuffle his pack for this one, but even City's second string were very impressive, rushing into a two-goal lead before half-time with Nico Gonzalez and Oscar Bob getting on the score sheet. We did manage to net a goal of our own in the second half, but it wasn't enough to spark a comeback as City went on to win the FA Cup. This season, it felt like we took our Premier League campaign to another level, especially after winning our first five games of the season. The fixture computer wasn't our friend as we did have to face Liverpool, Arsenal and Manchester City back to back in October, but we were then able to get things back on track following that and were in a great position going into the festive period. Dominic Solanke was our top goal scorer yet again in all competitions with 32 this year, but our key man was summer signing Lamine Yamal. The now 18-year-old showed why he's the best wonder kid in this year's game with 21 goals and 21 assists in all competitions and has developed lovely attribute-wise with the game time that we've given him this season. After the festive period, we kicked on and started showing how good a team we really can be. We even picked up impressive victories on the road at Anfield and at the Etihad on our way to a third place finish in the Premier League. Ultimately, we did finish 13 points behind winners Tottenham of all teams, but we will be playing Champions League football next season, which should allow us to attract a better calibre of player over the summer. And this season, I wanted us to bounce back from our disappointing final defeat in last year's Europa League, but we got off to an absolute flyer, dominating the league phase, winning all of our fixtures, including a 12-0 demolition of Carabag. It will be no surprise that we topped the league phase table with that flawless record and moved automatically into the round of 16. Here we'd face French side Lille and we continued to be impressive as Dominic Solanke bagged a second half brace in France to see us take command of the tie. The French side then had to attack in the second leg and this meant that we were able to pick them apart with the goals raining into their net with us winning 5-2 on the night to progress with a 7-2 aggregate win. It was Spanish side Real Sociedad in the quarterfinals and yet again we'd be on the road in the first leg. We opened up a quick two goal lead in the first half but as to be expected Sociedad came roaring back with big man Umar Sadiq scoring a second half brace to level the game at 2-2. However back in England things were much more routine as we hammered home four Four goals without reply, all whilst restricting Sociedad to just a single shot on target. So that meant that we moved into the semis where we'd face a surprising opponent in the face of Croatian side Hajduk Split. We took the lead from the spot in a dull first leg, but in the 89th minute, the Croatian side were able to pull level. However, unlike in previous rounds, we didn't have it all our own way at home. Justin Clivert fired us into the lead, but deep into injury time, Zabiani was super unfortunate as a clearance smashed into him and ended up in the back of our own net to take the game to extra time. But with the game looking like it would go to penalties, Laminia Mal was set free on the right-hand side and smashed the ball beyond the keeper and into the back of the net to send us into our second straight Europa League final. And this season, we come up against familiar foes in fellow Premier League side Chelsea. And much like last season, we weren't really at the races for this one. Nicholas Jackson put the Blues ahead in the 19th minute and then Christopher Nkunku doubled that lead from the spot on the stroke of half time. In the second half, Raheem Sterling added a third and we were all but dead and buried before Justin Cliver added nothing more than a consolation goal in the 85th minute. So this was a season of very near misses. Runners up in both the Europa League and the FA Cup along with a third place finish in the Premier League. But we are definitely, definitely getting there. This summer, we have a transfer budget of just over 47 million, and I think we need a new defensive midfielder and a new centre-back. So let's see what we can get. 
So going into the transfer update for season number four, we managed to shift a couple more players on and kind of almost balance the books with our own transfer budget. Phil Billing was the most expensive one to go. He has departed. He has gone over to Sevilla for 13.5 million pounds. That could rise to 17 and a half. But Dango Cuatra has also gone to Burnley for just under 10 million pounds as well. And Luis Sinistera has gone for 12 million pounds over to Ipswich, who I believe, I believe they're, oh no, they're in the championship. They paid 12 million for him and he's in the championship. That is crazy. I said that we needed another defensive midfielder. I didn't sign one. I said that we needed another centre back. I did sign one. I signed Alfie Dorrington from Tottenham. Uh, he cost quite a lot of money, but he is quite a big frame. Six foot two, 15 jump in reach. Good pace on him as well. He's English, English under 21 international. 26 million pounds we paid for him. He's played a couple of seasons in the championship. One for Coventry, one for Derby. Uh, and now it's going to be time to be a squad player for us in the Premier League. He's probably going to play more for us than he would do uh, at Spurs. And then I signed another forward because, you know, why not? I mean, basically what happened with this was I saw loads of teams sniffing around Junior Krupe for his £30 million release clause. He looks like he's developed quite well at Lorient in this game. He's listed as a wonder kid. So I thought, why not? Let's see if he can get Dominic Solanke out of this team because Big Dom is still here and give him some competition up front. I'm just intrigued to see how he gets on. I didn't need to buy him. I did not need to buy him, but I did. We're gonna do it anyway. So if I quick pick without restriction our best 11 for this season, this is how we are set up. The team has been largely the same now uh, for a majority of this uh, of this save. But on the bench, we've got Musquela, we've got Noema, we've got Dorrington, we've got Krupi down there. And we're starting to bring some of our youngsters through. Obviously, Tom Oldham's an interesting one who's come through our, uh, our, our new gens. And Charlie Stevens is a youth player who was at the club as well. So you can see some of these players that we've got in the squad. Uh, McKenna's on the bench as our backup goalkeeper. But I'm quite happy with this team. I think we're in good shape and obviously where I'm training the team uh, the tactical familiarity is rock solid and I still can't believe we've got Lamine Yamal. If we go into the competition stab we do have four this season we are going to be making our Champions League debut ladies and gentlemen uh, so hoping for a good performance in that one. If we go into our season preview we're now 100 to 1 to win the title we're predicted to finish inside that top 10 now no players in that media dream 11 still I don't know if Lamar, uh, Lamine Yamal is going to get in there but we'll, we'll see. I want to finish inside that top four or five again to qualify for the Champions League next season and ultimately maybe have some domestic trophy success that would be excellent let's simulate the season and see how we get on This was a big year for us after picking up so many runners up medals over the past couple of years. I wanted to get us a trophy in the trophy cabinet and we got off to a great start with this one in the EFL Cup. We progressed through the early rounds before facing Liverpool in the quarterfinals. This one took place at the Vitality Stadium and our young side really showed that they are not to be messed with this season, bagging three goals before the hour. Cody Gakpo did add a consolation goal for Liverpool but it wasn't enough as we moved into a two-legged semi-final against Brighton. The first leg of this one was an absolute barnstormer. The goals were flying in all over the place. This was a 10-goal thriller in the end, which ultimately we came out on top of, winning the game 6-4 to take a two-goal lead into the second leg at home. However, the game at home was a little bit more tape. With the two-goal lead, we just continued in the same vein and managed to secure a singular goal win to progress to the final with a 7-4 aggregate victory. And then we were back into final boss territory again as we came up against Manchester City in the final. But this time, we raced into a quick two-goal lead, but City were able to battle back and level the game with two goals of their own. Then, just past the hour mark, Justin Cliver fired us back into the lead, but yet again, we were pegged back, this time by Giorgio Scalvini. And then came the sucker punch as Rodri stepped up in the 91st minute and hammered a shot past Restes to see us lose yet another final, which is becoming a bit more of a habit than I would like. Later in the season, we had a mediocre run in the FA Cup, progressing past Sheffield Wednesday and Leicester before Brighton got their own back on us, knocking us out via penalties in the fifth round. 
This season, I wanted to see us make strides in the Premier League, and we got off to a very hot start, even including a 7-0 demolition of Hull City on the opening day. Losses were pretty few and far between, which was great to see as we pushed our way up to the top of the table. Our top goalscorer this season was summer signing Junior Krupi, who took ownership of that striker position and gave us a 25-goal return in his debut season. It will come as no surprise that Lamine Yamal also had a great year, contributing 20 goals and 15 assists as he finally got his career back on track after that poor spell at Barcelona. Moving into 2027, we continued to be successful, but we were still unable to achieve that Premier League crown as Arsenal were immense this season, beating us to the title by 10 points. And finally, this season we made our Champions League debut, and after losing our opening fixture, we showed that we are a team to seriously consider winning six of the eight games in the league phase to finish top of the table and qualify for the round of 16. Here we'd face Diego Simeone's Atletico Madrid, and we would have to travel to Spain for the first leg. I was expecting a rough game in the Metropolitano, but to my surprise, we came out relatively unscathed with a nice 2-0 win, despite only having 37% possession. The second leg definitely had much more action in it as we managed to score three goals in the first half to give us a massive cushion, which allowed us to ultimately move into the Champions League quarterfinals with a 5-2 aggregate win. And who should be waiting for us here but Manchester City, the side we seemingly cannot defeat. We were at home for the first leg and we got off to a terrible start as we left Ruben Diaz unmarked on a set piece and he scored a nice solo effort with his feet. On the stroke of half time, Diaz was at the centre of the action again, this time turning the ball into his own net from a Marcus Tavernier cross. In the second half, City took the lead again through Phil Foden, but we were able to equalise just 60 seconds later through Junior Krupe. The game ended 2-2, so I know we'd have a huge task ahead of us at the Etihad. This one was dull to say the least, and the game went into extra time after a 0-0 draw in the first 90 minutes. Extra time proved to be a step too far for this side as Oscar Bob and Erling Haaland both scored goals in the extra 30 to move into the semi-finals and see our Champions League dream come to an end. It felt like we progressed this season, but ultimately had zero to show for it, and we failed to win yet another final. We're going to have to have one final season with this side to see if we can get over the hump, and we just have over £66 million to see what we can do. So this summer we got our business done early. Nobody left the club because we were operating on a pretty lean squad and we pulled in three players. These three players. Now I'm going to talk about the real one first of all because we paid £95 million. Yes, there's a lot of instalments on this. But we picked up Lenny Yoro from Lille, uh, the highly touted Lille centre-back. He is now 21 years of age. We've just managed to get him in this season because if it had gone on another year, I wouldn't have been able to sign him. Six foot three, absolute monster at the back. Nice and fast as well really good physicals good mentals as well as good heading and stuff like that that's 17 for decisions and eight, uh, 16 for anticipation is fantastic and just what we want to see uh, he's going to be one of our main center backs and then we picked up two new gens as well the more expensive one of the two is this guy Jermaine Rocker he comes in from a river plate in Argentina to be a backup to Alex Scott basically very well rounded six foot two high technique high flair high determination you know he's going to develop into an absolute wonder kid uh, he's already listed as a wonder kid actually uh, and got eight caps and two goals for the argentine under 20s and considering he's only 19 i think he's doing very very well and we also picked up this man alexander popov from uh, luda Goretz over in bulgaria very well-rounded defensive midfielder high tackling high determination he still needs some work on his game but i think he can really really do that at 6-1 as well i think he's a perfect body to be in there as a defensive midfielder for us and hopefully he can get some good game time he's already been capped by Gabolga areas like full full-fledged international team it's got six caps for them age 19 so i think those two were good pickups i use my wonder kid filter for this guys i'll leave a link to that down in the description um as i said two loans going out don't really don't really change the world for us so if you go into the tactics see a uh, tactics screen and quick pick without restricting our best 11 this is how we are set up this season that front three is damaging cliver yamal and Krupi now superseded our man solanke uh, who is now on the bench we're young we're athletic we're dynamic we're a really good team 
some of the young players have really turned into studs this year. Uh, I'm obviously really impressed with Alex Scott. He looks fantastic. Lamine Mal has got his career back on track. He is now wanted by Inter. He's not going anywhere, I can guarantee you. Uh, Krupi also looks pretty darn good as well. Um, players like Archie Gray also having a good time for us. Really adopted to, uh, adapted to that defensive midfield position. Still hasn't been capped by England. Uh, Max Ahrens, though, also still hasn't been capped by England. But again, still a very, very good right back for us. Uh, uh, Kirkes as well, also fantastic. He is wanted on loan, but... I have no idea why he's wanted on loan. He ain't going anywhere. Uh, and then Restes is probably the other one that people would want to see. He's getting better and better. His throwing's gone up as well. High determination. His communication's going up. So a very, very good goalkeeper. He's now been capped by France, which cost me more money to, to lose. Uh, but he's got three caps for France now. So big uh, shout out to him. But the team's good. The team's young. The team's athletic. Let's see if we can push. This season, we have these four competitions. Prem, Champions League, FA Cup, and the uh, Carabao Cup or EFL Cup, whichever you want to call it. And then if we uh, go into, sorry, if we go into the Premier League and look at the season preview, we are now 50 to 1 to win the title, guys. Uh, these are our best and shortest odds that we've ever seen. We're predicted to finish in eighth. We're making good progress. Let's see if we can have one final push with this Bournemouth side to see if we can actually finally get that monkey off our back and actually win a couple trophies this year because I think this team is very much capable of doing just that. And if you are still watching this video at this point, before we get into the results of season number five, I just want to say thank you for watching and getting to this point of the video. It really does help me out. It really does help the video out. Also, if you're here, dropping a like on the video also does it wonders. So thank you so much. If you are still here, let me know that you are by commenting the word cherries down below. That will let me know in the comments that you were still here. Probably, what is it now? Like 30 odd minutes into this video. So thank you so much. I do really appreciate it. Let's get into the results of season five because this was a good season. The first trophy up for grabs this year was the EFL Cup and we progressed through the first couple of rounds with wins against Premier League opposition before coming up against Aston Villa in the quarterfinals. This one took place at the Vitality and we were in charge of this one from the first whistle to the last, running out 4-1 winners with defender Lenny Yoro bagging an impressive brace. We moved into the semi-finals where we faced Spurs over two legs, but the first one was wildly dull with Milos Kerkes receiving a straight red card in the 67th minute. Even with 10 men, we managed to hold on to a draw, meaning I had a good feeling to take the tie back to the vitality. However, Spurs opened the scoring in this one from the penalty spot as youngster Jamie Donnelly tucked the penalty home. It took us until the second half to pull level with Laminia Mal scoring a very unusual header, and Spurs then took the lead for a second time on the night through Rodrigo Bentancur, but then it was our chance for a penalty and Junior Krupi did his job emphatically, sending the keeper the wrong way. Then, as the game was looking like extra time, new gen Jermaine Rocker applied the finish inside the penalty area to a lovely passing move to send us into our second EFL Cup final in a row. This season, we'd come up against the other side in Manchester as we took on United at Wembley. We were in firm control of this one, but found United difficult to break down until Laminia Mal got the better of the United defence before curling a lovely effort beyond Onana to see us finally get over the hump and win the EFL Cup. Whilst that cut run was going on, we were also going great guns in the league after losing our first game of the season. After that, we then went on an 18-game unbeaten run as we flew up the league in style. Our superstar this season was now 21-year-old Junior Krupi, who is now a full-fledged France international and even scored 39 goals for us in this campaign. After the turn of the new year, we continued to look impressive, beating several of the best teams in the league and even finished the season with a seven-game winning run that included defeating Arsenal Manchester United and Liverpool. It seemed like season 5 was our year as we were crowned Premier League champions with a total of 87 points, beating Spurs to the title by just two points. But that wasn't all this season. In the FA Cup, we moved through the early rounds, defeating Blackburn, Lincoln and Spurs before facing Fulham in the quarterfinals. This was at the Vitality and we got off to a flyer with Junior Krupi opening the scoring, but that was quickly cancelled out by Fulham, who scored themselves just four minutes later. But we were able to show our class here, adding goals through Nuama and Popov to move into the semi-finals. Here we face Arsenal, who took the lead in the first half through Gabriel Jesus, but we were able to rally in the closing stages to score twice in two minutes through Nugent Rocker and Max. Aaron's. That result saw us enter yet another final where we would take on Manchester City in a replay of the Season 3 FA Cup final that we sadly lost 2-1. 
However, this time around, it was all about the red and black of Bournemouth. Justin Cliver got us off to a flyer in this one, bagging a goal inside the first 20 minutes. Then we followed that up with a Lenny Yoro near post header from a corner to make it 2-0 at half time. City did then respond straight away in the second half through Vital, but Cliver added his second of the game before Junior Krupi put the game beyond doubt in the 91st minute to see us finally crowned FA Cup champions. So that meant that we'd secured a domestic treble. But could we complete the set and win the Champions League as well in season number five? Well, we had a positive league phase, as you would expect, by picking up wins against the likes of Celtic, Roma and Inter Milan on our way to securing 17 points in total to finish seventh and automatically qualify for the round of 16. This is where we face familiar foes in Arsenal, with the first leg being at the Emirates. We did take the lead in this one against the run of play with Junior Krupi tapping in from close range after a nice counter-attacking move. However, Arsenal did square the tie in the 84th minute through substitute wonder kid Ethan Noeri. Back at the Vitality, we were very much the team in charge, scoring three goals without reply to move into the quarter-finals. After beating one of the sides from North London, it was time to take on the other as we were drawn against Spurs and would be away from home again in the first leg. Alex Scott opened the scoring on the night with a long-range strike, but Spurs were able to cancel that out through Simeone Profundi's calm finish inside our penalty area. But with 8 minutes of the 90 remaining, Max Aaron's cut in from the left-back position onto his stronger right foot and fired us back into the lead in the tie. And this second leg had absolutely everything. We continued the habit of scoring early as Krupi netted inside the first 60 seconds, but we were then reduced to 10 men as Christian Mosquera was given his marching orders for a late challenge on Florian Verts. With the extra man, Spurs were able to get themselves back into the tie, with Ernest Nuema scoring against the run of play for us. The tie was all square after 90 minutes, meaning we played extra time while the two sides couldn't be separated, meaning we'd move on to penalties. We needed a big performance from our keeper and Resto stepped up saving penalties on Jamie Donnelly and Lucas Bergval before new gen Henry Smith lashed his penalty over the bar to see us move into the semi-finals for the first time. And this was a big one as we'd face Real Madrid with the first leg being at the Bernabeu. It will be no surprise that Madrid took the lead in this one through Vinicius Jr, but our new gen Alexander Popov was able to equalise just before half time. But sadly for us in the second half, Chouameni scored a second goal for Madrid, which is how the game ended, leaving us it all to do back at home. And this is where Madrid were just too strong for us, opening up a quick 3-0 lead on the night with goals from Vinny and Jude Benningham. We did score twice ourselves after that, but we couldn't overcome a two-goal deficit to lose the tie 5-3 on aggregate. But this was still a remarkable season and one I'm sure Bournemouth fans would never forget. If you want to carry on this journey from this point, I will post the save files over on my Patreon. Links to that will be down in the description and in the pinned comment, and you can try and see if you can get over the hump and win the Champions League with this team. Laminia Mal at Bournemouth, you've got to give it a go, right? And if you do like the rebuild content, guys, check out this playlist. It's all the rebuilds that we've done on this year's game.